In this video, you'll learn how to create a table layout at design time and in code. A table layout is a two-dimensional grid that consists of cells formed by a set of rows and columns. Each layout item is arranged in table cells according to its row and column indexes. Layout items can occupy one or more cells. Locate the layout control within the toolbox, drop it onto the form, and dock it to the parent container. First, let's enable Table Layout Mode for the Root Group by right-clicking it and selecting Convert to Table Layout. When Table Layout Mode is enabled, two rows and two columns are automatically created. They divide the Group Client Area into four equal cells. You can also select Table Layout Mode using the Group's Layout Mode property. When you enable the Table Layout via the Context menu, this property is automatically set. Let's add two new rows and two new columns to the table. Expand the Root Group's Options Table Layout Group property and click the ellipsis button for the Row Definition settings. This invokes the Row Definition Collection Editor, which allows you to customize the table's row collection. As you can see, this collection already contains two rows, whose size type property is set to percent. This means that each row occupies a certain percentage of the total group height. The percentage itself is specified by the Height property. Heights of existing rows are set to 50, so they share the table layout equally. Let's change their size type to Auto Size to automatically adjust row heights to best fit their contents. In this case, the height property's values are ignored. Then, create two new rows by clicking the Add button. Pay attention that their height types are already set to Auto Size. Now close the editor and find four automatically sized rows in the table. When the auto-sized rows don't contain items, their size is specified by the auto size default definition length property. Let's set this property to 50 to increase the row's heights. Click the ellipsis button for the column definitions property to invoke the column definition collection editor. The size type properties of existing columns are also set to percent, and the width properties are set to 50. Let's set the first column's size type to absolute and the width to 300. This specifies that the column has a fixed width of 300 pixels. Create two new columns by clicking the Add button. Set their size type property to percent and their height property to 50. Thus, each of the last three columns has the width of 50%. When you close the collection editor, the layout control automatically recalculates sizes of percent items so that their sum equals to 100%, while keeping the proportions between the affected items. Let's reopen the editor to find the width property set to 33.3%. Now the table contains four columns, one of which occupies a certain number of pixels, while the others divide the remaining space equally. Let's now add controls to table cells. To add a control to the table layout, drag it from the toolbox and drop it onto a target table cell. For each control dropped, a layout item that embeds this control is created. You can move existing items to other empty cells using drag and drop operations. In addition, you can position a layout item in the table by specifying row and column indexes accessible via the options table layout item property. Let's set the item's row index and column index properties to 1 to arrange this item in the cell at the intersection of the specified row and column. Add other necessary controls to the table using the described ways. After that, let's specify the desired number of cells spanned by layout items. Set the first item's row span setting to 3 to stretch this item vertically to occupy 3 rows. Stretch the 6th, 7th, and 8th items horizontally by setting their column span properties to 2, 3, and 4, respectively. Finally, let's hide the label for the image by disabling the corresponding item's text visible option and assign custom captions to other layout items using their text property. Let's run the application to see the table layout that contains eight items explicitly positioned within table cells. Four items occupy more than one cell. The first column has a fixed width, while other columns divide the group space equally. All rows are automatically sized to best fit their content. Now close the application. Let's start again with an empty layout control, but now let's see how to create the same table layout in code. 
For these purposes, create the separate create table layout function and call it in the forms load event. To enable table layout mode, set the root group's layout mode property to table. After this, two rows and two columns are implicitly added to the table. Just like at design time, each of them initially occupies 50% of the total width or height. All rows and columns can be accessed via the group's row definitions and column definitions collections. Set the size type properties of the first and second rows to auto size. Specify the fixed width of 300 pixels for the first column by setting this column size type to absolute and width to 300. Let's create two new rows whose size type is set to auto size and add them to the table. To do this, create an array of two row definition objects with appropriate settings and add it to the root group's row definitions collection using the add range method. Then create an array of two column definition objects with the percent size type and width of 50%. Let's add this array to the root group's column definitions collection using the add range method. If you have rows and columns of the percent type, you typically need to avoid size recalculation when modifying row and column collections. To accomplish this, the code must be wrapped with the begin update and end update method calls. After that, add the appropriate controls to the table layout using the layout controls add item method. By default, new layout items are placed in the topmost and leftmost cell. To explicitly position layout items within table cells, use their row index and column index properties. To specify the desired number of cells to be occupied by layout items, set their row span and column span properties. And let's run the application to see the result. The created table layout consists of four rows and four columns. Layout items are positioned in the specified table cells. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.